So today I'm gonna take you through what reading challenge I'm doing for this year and also my reads for January and a little bit about how I set up my reading journal. I'm gonna post a flip through of my reading journal in a different video and I'm gonna link that down below when I have it up on YouTube. But So I'm not gonna go into detail what I'm doing in my reading journal because I'm gonna do that in that video instead. So just very fast about what a reading challenge is because you might never have heard about it. So the one I'm doing is called Reading is Magic and it is uh, done by my Harry Potter running club or nowadays it's called the Potterhead Running Club. You can check them out and they have lots of different groups and one of them is a book club and this year they're doing this challenge called Reading is Magic and it's basically 62 prompts and the prompt is basically a theme for a book. Not all in all there are 62 reading prompts and I will try to finish them all so that sets my reading goal for this year 62 books. However, I will read some books and I'm all, I already have done this uh, which don't fit any prompts and this is basically what always happens with reading challenges for me unless it's specifically like read 10 books a month. In January I have actually finished 11 books so far and before you go like wow that is a lot 11 um, or maybe you're not like that at all maybe you're like 11 isn't a lot because I know some people out there read like 70 books a month but I just want to say that like several of these books have a real low page count. Uh, I'm actually keeping count of the numbers of books I read each month and the page count. So my reading list this month included books <laughs> 8, 9 and 10 of the Will Trent series written by Cameron Slaughter. I also read the last uh, book in the Curse Worker series. It's a trilogy. Then I read The Last Magician, which is book number one in a series written by Lisa Maxwell. Or Lisa Maxwell, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Another series, which I've read the first three books in, and before you like, wow, that's a lot. It's a children's series, and all of these books are 160 pages each, so it's not a lot to read. And they are called The Magic Potion Shop. And I also read Pan's Labyrinth, The Labyrinth of the Farm, and Confessions of a Male Nurse. And I think that sums up what I've read this month. Let's talk about The Magic Potion Shop. The Magic Potion Shop is a series written by Abby Longstaff, and as I said, they are 160 pages each, and these are for children from the age of 5 to 8 years. So this month I actually read three books in the Karen Slaughter Will Trend series, and all of these are thrillers, and all of these, they talk about sexual violence, they have strong language, they have sexual scenes, they include very descriptive pictures of physical and emotional violence. Book number eight in the Will Trent series is called The Kept Woman and basically Will Trent is an agent with the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. It's like the FBI but for the state of Georgia instead. He's a very lovable character but he also has his issues and in The Kept Woman we actually center around another character that is known from other parts of the series and she's called Angie Pulaski. The prompt for this book was to read a book where the lead is a female that is a person of color and Angie Pulaski is described as someone who could be taken for being black, for being white, for being Hispanic. And normally she isn't 
the lead character. Will Trent is the lead character of the series, hence it is called the Will Trent series. At the very beginning of the book, the GBI is called into a crime scene and really fast it becomes obvious that Angie Pulaski has been there and there is no sign of her, no one can reach her and there is a lot of blood with her blood type and she has a very uncommon blood type of course because it wouldn't be good reading and otherwise DNA analysis will take you most often <laughs> weeks or months but if you rush it it will come back to you in a couple of days before you send away blood for DNA analysis you actually type it because that way you can at least roughly tell if the blood could come potentially from one person, two persons, and so on. And throughout the book we follow actually Angie more than we than we follow Will in this series. And this is why I picked this book and was okay with picking it for my female lead with a person of color. Because we are basically following her through the days that have led up to the events that unfortunately end with this bloodbath. And I probably wouldn't recommend reading this if you either, of course if you have a problem with all the content warning, don't read this book. But also I probably wouldn't recommend reading this one on itself, it probably reads the best if you have a background story on Angie Puleski so that you know what kind of character she is if you want to read this one. Also, I have to say that this one jumps a lot, it jumps back and forth in time, it changes, it changes point of view several times. If you don't deal very well with that kind of reading, this book might not be for you. So I also read part 9 in this series and this, that one is called The Last Widow and I picked this for my prompt for a political thriller. And the political thriller genre came to life in the 1950s and I think that it can be discussed what a political thriller is. And for me <laughs> this one isn't marked as a political thriller but this book is highly political and it is a thriller thus I put it down for my prompt as a political thriller. This book starts off with a literal bang because there is an explosion and soon after this explosion we learn that this explosion was not an accident, it was caused by an anti-government group. They have kidnapped one of the lead persons. What really got me with this book is that it targets an issue that we have in our world today which is like anti-government racist groups and this book is as I said highly political so if that's not something you're looking for in your reading then this book might not be for you. That it is basically a horror story of what might come in our time and what already has partially happened like if we look at the Pulse shooting uh, the Pulse Club shooting that was in 2016, that a terrorist doesn't have to be of a certain ethnicity or a certain belief, but that there are actually a lot of people out there who could potentially hurt you. And I actually pulled, pulled a quote out of this book and the one I chose to go with was you were still trying to figure out what to do with all the rage and lust and anger that sparked up like a forest fire for no reason. He kind of describes how as a teenager or a young adult, when especially if you feel like you don't have a purpose, you desperately seek for a purpose and unfortunately it isn't uncommon to find that purpose in a group that doesn't really want your best. They are focused on what they call the greater good but really it isn't good for anyone. So part 10 in the series, it had nearly 500 pages, it was 496 pages long. It's called The Silent Wife and this one was definitely the most brutal of all the books. Like she goes into most detail and I actually had to put down the book for a minute and just gather myself and I had to put it away for a whole day I think. And I actually fitted this with the prompt that it is a mystery novel because 
I know a thriller and a mystery novel aren't really interchangeable, but since it is a detective who you're following and you're trying to figure out who the murderer is, it still re pretty much reads as a mystery novel for me. So that's what I did. I think that this book is really different than the other nine books in the series. Normally, Slaughter focuses quite a lot on the perpetrators, like either his point of view or someone really close to him, but he or she really focuses on the victims. We don't really learn a lot about the perpetrator, but now, nonetheless, I actually could figure out pretty soon who actually was responsible for the killings and the mutilations that happened in this book. I really enjoyed the entire Curseworker series. This is a series where you want to start with book number one, White Cat, then move on to number two, Red Glove, and conclude with Black Heart. This is definitely a young adult fantasy book. There is a little bit of cursing, I think. There is very, very mild sex scenes. They are nothing too obscene, and I really enjoyed reading them. And I'm probably going to read this series sometimes again. The book Confessions of a Male Nurse is written by Michael Alexander, but it's just a pen name, and he is has been a nurse in New Zealand and the UK, but currently works as a school nurse in Switzerland. It offers you nothing more and nothing less than an insight in what it is actually like to work in the nursing field. So if you consider that line of work for yourself, I definitely recommend reading this. I would say that even if you're not a nurse or you're not familiar with medical terms, you can definitely still enjoy this. But it might come off a little bit political. There is some language and some graphic detail, but it is, it is to, I think like 70% is a book that is fun to read, that will have you laughing, and then 30% it is lifting what issues we face in nursing today. So The Last Magician is, as I said, part one in the series by Lisa Maxwell. And I really enjoyed this one. I It's 500 pages, but I finished it, I think, in like one or two days because I just couldn't stop reading, which is a problem. I actually, this is the only book that I read this month that I gave it 10 out of 10. There was some violence and some kissing and stuff, but nothing too... I, I, it isn't the graphic violence that you have in other books. And the intended age group, according to the internet, is 14 years and up. I fitted this with the prompt fit symbol on the cover. And it has two snakes that form an... I'm not going to pronounce this right, so don't come for me. Euroboros. And the Euroboros, or Euroboros, is also called the unsatiable dragon, or snake and it is consuming its own tail. It was first found in ancient Egypt and has been depicted in lots of different contexts and lots of different cultures. It is generally interpreted to present a closing circle, like the circle of life, you know, one thing and one another begins. I know that 500 pages may seem like a lot, but as you said, I finished this in like one or two days because it was just, it was well written, it had everything I wanted in a book. The story is set mainly in New York of 1902 and if you like like historical fiction I would definitely recommend this book. There, It is a fantasy book so there's some magic involved, there's time travel. So what I think that some people would struggle with this book is that it changes from different points of views and I know that some people struggle with this. I personally had no problem with that. The characters were very well balanced. I loved the way she has written it. I loved everything about historical New York that she mentions. I've never been to New York, so I can't tell you how accurate it is. But since she took help of like a historical society in New York, I think that it is pretty accurate. So Pan's Labyrinth is a book written by Cornelia Funke and 
Guglielmo, Guglielmo, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna pronounce this right. Guglielmo del Toro. He actually wrote the screenplay for the movie Pan's Labyrinth, The Labyrinth of the Thorn. And it was so popular that he collaborated with Cornelia Funke and made it into a book. Which is unusual because usually we have a book and it becomes a movie and then we're all gonna say oh the book was so much better but here we have a movie that actually becomes a book and Cornelia Funke is one of my absolute favorite authors she wrote so many books that I loved as a kid and one of my absolute favorite book series of all times is the Ink Heart series and she's the author of that, so I thought when I saw her name, I was like, immediately like, I'm gonna love this book. And it turned out I <laughs> didn't. And that's totally okay. I didn't think that partially maybe it was because this is a dark fairy tale and it's not my genre. I'm not, I, I, I don't think that it was a good fit for me. This book is set during World War II in... Uh, Spain and it focuses on this tale of the princess of the underworld that one day went up to the surface and then was lost to the underworld because she forgot who she was and I think that the story kind of drew me in because I thought oh this this has the great makings of a for a book but I just didn't feel it so there was nothing wrong with the characters or the writing in general. I just feel like the storyline for me was a bit jumpy. I didn't quite feel like everything was neatly connected. And there are some really graphic descriptions of violence. Uh, so it kind of made me wonder who is this written for? Because if I read a dark fairy tale, I'm gonna think, okay, it's written for older children, but it's a fairy tale, so the group it targets is still children in my mind. But I just felt like this is inappropriate for a child to read. I, I wouldn't want my child reading this because there was some really, really bad stuff in there. But it is marked 12 and up, so it is written for older children or younger teens or whatever but I just yeah I don't know what to tell you I wouldn't recommend reading it but we all have different tastes it has great ratings on Goodreads it has a 4.3 out of 5 so yeah it just wasn't for me and the prompt I picked this for was a book about magic because there is magic in it and yeah I wouldn't reread it. So the last book I read was All Cats Are Introverts and I <laughs> did pick up my phone because I just finished it today so I haven't written it in my reading journal yet. And it is written by Francesco Marciuliano, which sounds Italian but I am I'm not gonna say it is because I don't know. It's just 112 pages and some of those pages are pictures, so if you want a really thin book, then this is definitely great. I fitted this with the prompt fit for reading a book with a cat on the cover. And I actually laughed out loud when I read this book. It is extremely funny. It is a book about cats, as you might guess. And he is basically talking about the two cats he has his home at home, but he is talking from their point of view. And they are written as fun little poems. And if you've ever met a cat, then you probably will recognize it in this. And it just, yeah, they're just really funny. I really, I really love the poems. I'm gonna read this whenever I have a bad day. I will read you one of the poems just to finish this video up on a good note. This poem is called Miss Days, and it is, as I said, taken from the and it is, as I said, taken from the book, Cats Are Introverts. Will I miss the days, not spent outside, not spent with others, not spent with you? Will I see such days as missed opportunities, as vanished chances, as lost time? Sometimes, another time, 
Not this time. For today I discovered I can stand on your flat screen at least for three minutes before the warm month gives weight. So thank you for watching and I'll be back with a new reading video in a month. Bye!